Hello everyone and welcome back to another Wizard 101 video. Yesterday, I went over what changes I would like to see in Wizard 101 in the current state of the game. And I kind of decided after that video that I was going to go over current changes I would like to see specifically in the worlds and in PvE story-wise. Because I figure that that is definitely one of the largest parts of my channel. I've built my audience off of PvE and PvE is one of the most important things to me. So I thought I would go over what changes I think are necessary specifically in PvE and specifically in the worlds. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm going to start this with a double kind of thing. First off, I do really think Crocotopia needs a change. I feel like out of all of the worlds, uh, it is definitely the most outdated in regard to look. I would say the only ones that get close are Mushu and Dragonspire. But definitely, it needs a few graphical updates. You can see it does not look nearly as good as the rest of this game does. Like, even Celestia onwards, I wouldn't say Celestia is the most beautiful world, but even Celestia onwards still look better than a few of these Arc 1 worlds. So, I think it's really important for King's Isle to go back and kind of update them. But on the flip side, and what I want to see is the fact that I don't want a lot of the quests changed drastically. Now, in Wizard City, they changed a lot of the quests, specifically like Nolan Stormgate in Cyclops Lane, and they changed Private Quinn in Firecat Alley. I don't want to see stuff like that anymore. I think that, yes, it wasn't a bad idea to kind of change up the story, give it a little bit of a fresh new coat of paint. But do I think that they should have completely changed the characters fundamentally as people? No. And I think I will be severely disappointed if they do the same in Krakatopia. Like, as a kid, you know, I have all of these characters in my head that I think are really, really good and really strong characters. Like Professor Winthrop, you know, he wants, he's an explorer and he really just wants to figure out what's going on with the Crocs. And, you know, he's a dedicated man. If they suddenly make him all wacky and zany, I'm probably not going to be too happy. Same with the Order of the Fang characters. If they make these jaded old people who feel incredibly, like they parted and went their different ways and feel incredibly bitter after making the Croconomicon and the Great Sleep, if they suddenly make them all like happy-go-lucky people, I'm not going to be too happy, to be completely honest. So, Here's what I would like to see, and this is something that I think would be the way to go if they decide that they want to do this. I need a classic mode, but for quests. I don't know how hard that would be to make, but I really need a classic mode that allows you to keep the original quest lines. Because, I'm not gonna lie, I really miss the days when I could do Wizard City and reminisce on the old memories that I used to have as a kid. I will never be able to do that again. Literally never. Despite the fact that I don't think the Wizard City changes are bad, I will never be able to have that same nostalgia for Wizard City that I used to have. So I don't want to see that happen to Krakatopia, which I consider to be one of the most nostalgic worlds for me. So that is the first thing I would like to mention on this, is Krakatopia and its need of a fresh coat of paint. But to continue on, enough talking about Krakatopia, let's talk about Mushu, because Mushu is something that needs a fresh coat of paint more than other worlds. I don't know why, but I think Mushu is objectively the ugliest Arc 1 world, and it's a real shame because I think it could be really beautiful. I think the problem is, is first off, look at this bamboo, this two-dimensional bamboo that just looks extremely ugly. They definitely need to change that, and that's on the size of most streets, you can see it here. They need to change this, and it is like completely two-dimensional. You can see if I go like this, it is just two-dimensional bamboo. They need to change this, and I imagine it wouldn't be too hard to just render in a 3D version of bamboo that would look an infinite amount of times better. That's number one. Number two I'm actually going to talk about for Mushu is the shading. Mushu's shading, if they made it look like Pirate 101's Mushu, I don't know how many people have played Pirate 101's Mushu, but please do if you haven't. It looks beautiful. Pyro 101 Mushu is everything that was 101 Mushu should look like, and I really, really want to see that. So, without a doubt, that is what should be included with the next Mushu update. Now, I'm just going to go specifically in, I'm just going to gloss over Dragonspire real quick because I don't want to keep saying the same thing over and over again. 
Dragon Spire also really needs a graphical update, like very much so needs a graphical update. Dragon Spire has this problem where everything is obviously dark and dreary and there's also the lava, but the problem is is that the textures are, in my opinion, are incredibly outdated. Dragon Spire, in my opinion, looks worse than most Arc 1 worlds and I think it's specifically just because of how dark and dreary it is like i think that this needs changing like this looks ugly and i would love to see them change it but let's get into some other changes rather than just graphical changes because i think that that's important let's talk about some worlds that need quest line changes because i think that genuinely while i wouldn't want to see arc 1's quest line changed i would like to see some of arc 2's quest line changed starting with celestia while i think celestia also could do for a little bit of a graphical spruce up i think this is the last world i would consider needing a graphical change celestia really needs some other changes in my opinion first and this is going to be the most major for me please make the teleporters actually go somewhere and make teleporters in all the streets for example storm riven here doesn't have any teleporters and it is the longest walking street. I think the only street in Celestia that's longer walk-wise may be the Crustacean Empire, and that also has bad teleporters that don't go exactly where you need them to, but this street needs a teleporter. I can't, look how slow my character is on the map, and now it has to go all the way down here, through here, around, to get all the way to Storm Ribbon Hall. It is disgustingly long, and that needs changing. Definitely needs changing. And in regards to the quest line, I think the quest line could use a few changes as well. I think a few areas like the District of the Stars and Crustacean Empire are largely forgettable and their quest lines are kind of bland. I think, well, I think the District of the Stars isn't actually that bad. It definitely could be a lot better. I think it has quite a few like boringly long walking quests and certain quest lines and like collect quests that just really don't do the street justice and crustacean empire i shouldn't have to explain why that's bad considering i think most people hate the crustacean empire considering crustacean empire is just god awful really i think those streets need changing the most out of everything but um obviously a few other streets are not the best i think out of all the streets the floating land is probably in my opinion the best and well most well made it actually has a like coherent quest line that works survey camp and the grotto aren't too bad as well and the science center is a little bit of a mixed bag but overall if you just remove like the collect quest in the science center that has enemies that are just kind of inside of each other that like different enemies inside of each other and you only have to collect from one that would be perfect like if they just made the battlefield separate for those enemies science center would be perfect but alas the aquabots and what are they the automaton something i don't know um they are combined and it definitely makes it very frustrating to do i'm not actually going to go to avalon i'm just going to click on it and tell say the sword of kings uh, I went over this in a video in the past, but the Sword of Kings needs changes. This is something that, without a doubt, just needs changes. Moving on. Next, we have Azteca, and this is going to go hand in hand with Celestia. This needs major questline changes. Azteca, I will say, somehow, and I don't know if this is just me, I think it isn't just me, I think most people will agree with me here. Azteca, somehow, somehow, despite having 100 quests less than Chrysalis, still feels longer than chrysalis i don't know if that's just me but that's how i feel like i feel like azteca feels longer than chrysalis it's not but it feels longer than chrysalis and i think the reason for that is is that while there's more quests in chrysalis a lot of the aztecan quests are really bland and boring now i will say it's a shame because i think this world looks really beautiful like i actually think this world is one of my favorite aesthetic wise I do really like it. I mean, look at it. It's like a really beautiful looking world with like different and beautiful uh, architecture. I think it could be really good. And it reminds me a lot of like Zafaria. And Zafaria is one of my favorite worlds in this entire game. But on the flip side, they fill it with a bunch of just useless and way too long quests that take up way too much time. I think they need to readjust it and try to bring that 177 quest or 199 quest, whatever it is, down to around 150 or so, cutting out the more useless quests and kind of condensing and combining some quests, and Azteca would feel a lot better. Removing the more useless bosses that are just there for no reason, and potentially even either displaying that the bosses have a dual typing or 
removing that dual typing from the game because I think that, that those are some of the worst parts of Azteca. All right, so we're getting into the final stretch of worlds that I think need changing here. I really think that out of all the worlds, the two that need the most changing after this are Chrysalis and Imperia. And I think realistically, I'm not going to exactly go massively in depth into why. I think that all of what I've said about Azteca and stuff can be applied to these as well. I think Imperia is a bit different though. I think Imperia is fine overall. I think it could cut down on a few quests, but it is generally fine. I really don't know how I could change Imperia. I'll be completely honest with you guys. I think if you guys could leave some comments below what you think Imperia needs, let me know. Do you think Imperia needs anything at all? I personally, I have mixed opinions on Imperia. I think it's not my favorite world, but it's not an awful world. And I don't actually know what you could do to change that, to be honest. I don't know if it's just the story or whatever, but let me know. What do you think? In regards to Chrysalis, this very obviously just needs a little bit of a cut down on quests. This world shouldn't have 277 quests. I know it was released in two parts. And yeah, each of those two parts is worth a full like Mirage plus in terms of quests. But I think you cut down on some of those quests, easily remove some of them. Realistically, it's not that bad. And I think Chrysalis isn't as bad as Azteca, despite having more quests. I think it just needs a little bit of rework. But I will say Chrysalis, I think is okay. I think it's not as bad as Azteca. It just needs some changes in regard to maybe some of the quests and some of the areas because i think some of the areas definitely drag on like Tyrion gorge last wood those areas kind of drag on a bit but that's really it for today i think that that's kind of what i wanted to cover i think arc one and arc two really need the most changes because i honestly think arc three is the best arc in this game and is genuinely almost perfect it's as close to perfect as you can get in my opinion imperia being probably my least favorite of the worlds but that doesn't really mean it's bad for arc 4 it's obviously too early to talk about it but as of right now what i want from arc 4 is probably revealing what the overarching villain is because if there's only one world left and they haven't really revealed it yet i mean i guess you could say it's the old one but i'm not entirely sure on that one you could say it's us the aberrant paradox but I, again i'm not too sure on that I think they need a concrete reveal what the villain is, and I'm sure we'll get that next world, but I am a little, a little bit curious because for Malastare, he's revealed in Wizard City, and for Morganth, she's revealed in Celestia, and then even further than that, Old Cobb is actually revealed in Chrysalis, so Old Cobb is revealed in the arc before, so I think it's weird that there isn't really a final villain there yet, but otherwise, that is really it for today. Let me know what you think. What do you think needs to be worked on the most out of these worlds? I think I overviewed it pretty well. What I think needs the most changes, specifically, obviously, graphical changes and questline changes, but what do you think? That's it for today. Otherwise, thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next video. Adios.